So we finally got the car running, which means now we gotta get ready to get the car to stop. We're doing Corvette brakes in the back and the front, actually. We're doing C3 in the rear, C6 in the front, but in this episode, it'll be just the rears. Uh, this actually worked great. Spoiler alert, I've already driven the car, but that's because I wanted to make sure that this whole setup was gonna work, because if it didn't, it would've been pointless to upload, but it worked. It fit, it stops, and it's almost, 100% bolts on. The e-brake, we do have to make something for it, um, but as far as the caliper and the brackets and everything that comes off the C3 Corvette, bolts right up to this year Impala. It's pretty cool. So, let's get to it. So the reason these parts bolt up is because the certain year Impala is actually share the same axle flange as the Corvette. I think it's up to 1970, but I couldn't find a direct answer on when this actually changed. Here's the main bracket for this whole setup, and as you can see, it fits right on. So this setup does have a few flaws. The first one being that there's no way to put in this pin for the brake shoe without removing the backing plate first. Granted, all these parts are brand new, so I shouldn't have to do this again for quite some time. So it's not the biggest deal for me, but I just gotta remember to put it in first. For hardware, I used 3 8 bolts and they were all an inch and a half long. At first I did use flange bolts and nuts, but as you can see, I just barely cleared the axle. So because of this, I ended up changing to non-flange bolts and just using nylon nuts. Next is putting in the anchor bolt that goes right on top of the backing plate. And this little clip just makes sure that it won't work itself out over time. Now at this point is where you put your axle in, and this brings me to the biggest flaw of the system, and that's the fact that the rest of this install requires you to have the axle in place. The axle won't go in far enough into the axle to be able to install the C-clip if the shoes are on. So everything seen from here on would need the axle in place. For the purpose of the video, I left it out so the process is much easier to see, but it's really not that bad. Here I'm assembling the brake shoes and I found this diagram online that shows you which way the adjuster is supposed to face. How critical this actually is, I'm not sure, but I'm going to follow it anyway. These arms are what expands the brake shoes when you pull the e-brake. These could actually be installed before the axle install to make it a little easier. There's a left hand and a right hand set, so double check on that. And it's all held together by just a washer and an e-clip. So this is another small flaw of the system, since there's no hole in the back of this pin to be able to hold it. I saw on Corvette brake rebuild videos that a lot of people were just using some kind of mechanic wire or fishing line to hold the pin. I just used this old guitar string. Then when I put it in the brake shoe, I just run that wire through the hole where the pin's going to sit. And now we can install the spring. Now I did have to fight with it a few minutes, but with a little patience, it went on just fine. And before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate the adjuster. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the spring for the other brake shoe. This one went a lot faster. And here is how the system works underneath the rotor. Now we install the final spring that goes here on top and that's it. almost forgot to lubricate the back of the shoes that made contact with the backing plate and also went ahead and lubricated the arms as well. Now I get the pleasure of taking this whole thing apart again to do it correctly, but like I said before, it's not that bad. Just take your time with it and you can still take care of it. It takes a little longer, but it took me maybe 20 minutes for both sides. Not that bad. And now we set the adjustment for the brake shoes and having a slight amount of drag is a good starting point.
so the e-brake does work but i do have to point out that the e-brake does actually have to get bedded into the rotor just like your regular pads do uh, there's a whole braking process they had for the corvette spec officially from gm where you would drive 10 to 20 miles an hour and start getting on the e-brake so it came to the stop you did that a few times and the shoe is going to work itself into the rotor so then you have a full contact on it when you do pull the e-brake on it so at first it wasn't that great but then after kind of working on it and dragging it a little bit and stuff like that letting the pad road or sorry letting the shoe work into the rotor um this car holds and will actually stall with the e-brake on now so i'm good with that okay so now both sides are done and now it comes to the hardest part about this whole thing the only thing that's not actually bolt on about this whole process is the e-brake because well this isn't a corvette so all the places where the corvette would have the e-brake running aren't here so we have to make our own now i've kind of been messing around with everything goes and i've tried using the stock routing and it doesn't work now that we have you know a different transmission a different drive shaft the exhaust is different everything's in a different place so basically nothing's really letting anything else get a straight path um so we're gonna have to run a different path but that's the easier part. The harder part is going to actually figure out how to get a bracket on the back of here so we can put our e-brake cable onto it and have a straight shot to the arm of the e-brake. But I do have an idea. Now, this is kind of going off of other cars that I've seen and also, um, I'm playing it on the name. The guy who had that forum post, uh, he made this like cool little L bracket. It was really clean, really nice. He made it out of square tubing. I don't have any here, but I do have this. And this is the old bracket that was for the brake kit that I had on here before. So the holes are already lined up and I'll have two mounts, sorry, I have two points of contact there to mount to make sure nothing actually moves. Now, if anything that's gonna move even with one point, I don't know, but this is a little more secure. I just need to cut this. This is zinc is the only problem and you can't weld on zinc. It's kind of toxic, the fumes are. So as you can tell, it's all scratched up. So it'll come off if I just rub it on, rub it on the concrete. Um, the more smarter idea is to throw in a vinegar or multi attic acid, which I don't have. I, uh, I think I'm smelling colors. So after spending a few minutes measuring, grinding, cutting, and drilling, I came up with these two shapes. This one being the main piece that actually bolts onto the axle flange. And then this tab where the e-brake was actually installed into. It's going to look something a little like this. So now we're just going to throw it into the vise and get ready to weld it together. But anytime I pull out the welder, I do have to remind all of you. I am not a welder. I'm just a guy with a welder. So here I'm just going to start with a quick tack weld to see how it'll look and I'm happy with it so I'll go ahead and weld it together. So now I'm going to grind it down because the spinning rock makes me the welder that I'm not. And this is the final product. And after killing my last brain cell with zinc fumes, I got the opposite side taken care of too. And this is what it looks like installed you guys are gonna have to deal with a lot of phone videos from here on but it worked great and now we just throw them on to paint all right next is going ahead and routing the e-brake cable i'm going to take out the suspension here because i have some other suspension that's coming up in another video but we're going to be using these pads that originally held the springs here Ready? Ah. I found this diagram online of an old duster routing, so I'm gonna go somewhat based off of that. We use the clamps as holding points for the e-brake, that way we don't have too much movement going around. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the driver's side. <laughs> And here's a shot of what that looks like under the car. I'm just making sure that the wheels are going to clear as well. And they do. Everything looks great. I'm just making sure it's not going to be touching the exhaust either. And I think that's going to work. 
And now I'm going to be using these two holes in the frame. This bottom one's where the original one did run through, but I'm going to make them both bigger. That way you can run both lines through its own individual hole. And this is what that looks like. I made these holes big enough for the hardware to fit through in case I got to pull them out at some point. And once I've decided where I want to put this bracket for the cables to end up at, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting everything to length. I got to use part of the old cable from the Impala since the Catabot wasn't long enough for this application. I also got to add ends to it, so I'll be using these from Amazon, and I'll be using the big crimps I got for the last video that I used for the battery lugs. It ended up working pretty great. Just to make sure that everything was going to stay put, I had Tim here pull on it and I pulled it on the other side and it ended up working great. Now I'll go ahead and start installing our lines into our brackets here. And this is the finished product. I will have to reinforce that bracket right there because it does bend the metal. It's not too thick. so. We'll come back to that, but this ended up working great. And I ended up using the old equalizer as well. And there we go, we have an e-brake. So these are a Wilwood unit. This is basically just a really fancy stock replacement because the C3 brakes already were four piston, but they were iron and they were heavy and these things were like half the weight. Um, basically all the issues you would have off of a OEM C3 caliper are gone with this and well, even though I wanted to keep this parts store friendly, I could just literally go replace it. If something goes bad with this thing, I just literally go to the parts store, get a stock one, and it'll bolt right up, no problem. So the pistons are the same size and everything. There's a front and rear, these are the rears. Um, the pistons are the same size, but the actual contact patch of the piston is actually bigger. So this is just a better unit and it's a lot easier to handle. It's a lot, um, it's a lot lighter and it just bolts right on. So we're just gonna put that in and see how it looks. I did end up having to shim the caliper because the bolt would either hit the back of the rotor or the caliper itself wasn't centered. So I did have to find some washers around the garage and I was able to get it pretty centered. I used the feeler gauge, which might have been overthinking it, but I really didn't want to do this again and it ended up working great after all. Then we got to make sure to go ahead and torque those down. I also threw some Loctite on there just to be safe. Next is installing the brake pads. We're going to take off the safety clip here and take the pin out going to loop up wherever the brake pad makes contact and moves around. Install our pin right back in. And that's that. We're done. All the parts I use are actually all new and most of them came from Corvette Central. Uh, this isn't new information. People have been doing this on Impalas for a long time. You can actually put C3 brakes in the front as well, but we're doing a whole different setup on the front. So I'll be listing part numbers and all that. And I'll put a link to the forum post that I found that actually list, listed a lot of the parts on there. And yeah, I believe I'm the first to post this on YouTube for these cars. So I'll take that at least. Not, in, not new information, but I'm just helping spread it. So there you go. Um, yeah, it works great. It works great. The lines are a little annoying. I have to redo the lines eventually, but every application is going to be different. Um, the car stops well, actually, really, really well. And it looks good. Well, I guess that's, that's it. You'll see videos of this car driving here pretty soon. Thank you for watching.